Hello, my name is Drew. You're you, which is exactly who you should be. So good job there. This is the Goulet Pen Company. These are fountain pens and a bunch of other products. And this is the face that's going to talk to you about them right now because they're new, they're available now, and you're not gonna buy them if you don't know about them. So here we go. I'm gonna tell you about them and you're gonna buy them, right? That's how this works. Um, if you want, of course. But we've got a bunch of new stuff. So let's go from lowest price to highest price. And that means starting with some $5 washi tape. This is a new thing for us. We have not sold washi tape before, but we're selling it now in three different designs, um, exclusive designs that we have come up with here in house. We've got one light blue with Nub and Fred, our fountain pen and our bottle of ink. Uh, we uh, one time had a mispronunciation of a nib and feed, which auto corrected to Nub and Fred. Uh, and we just thought it was funny. So we named our little guys Nub and Fred. So uh, that's cute. And then the Corgi and Hamster, which I, of course, personally love because Corgis, that's available. And then we've got our dragons guarding some Lamy pens. So these three styles are available, all $4.95 a piece. And they're great. They're fun to decorate or organize your journals with. And they're honestly pretty great for crafts as well. I like to let my kid use it to tape up whatever he wants to tape up because it doesn't really damage furnitures, furniture or walls or anything like that. So those are here. Moving down the list, a little bit more expensive, but not a lot. For $20, we're going to have a Pilot Dip Pen, which is new, not just in the uh, sense that it is a recently released product, but it's a new thing for Pilot. The, the whole dip pen thing is, uh, we're going to be talking more about that because this is not the only new dip pen we have available today, but um, it's not a uh, pretty standard thing that Pilot does. If I can get it out of the box, there we go. So this is what we're looking at right now. I'll show you a picture, a better picture, but it is simply a nib holder and a steel Pilot nib, just like the ones you would find on the Kakuno, the Explorer, the Prera, or the Metropolitan. And it's not meant to be removed. You can get it out there. It's not like super easy, but you know, I would leave it in there. But uh, it does not have any, have any sort of reservoir. It's just a steel nib, you dip it, you're right with it, and that's that. They're available in clear plastic and blue plastic, both kind of translucent. And then they're also available in two wood colors, black and natural. So if you wanted just a very simple and affordable, again, only at $20, way to just practice your, um, your test your inks to see what looks good on the paper. This is a good and easy way to do it. They're easy to clean. It's as of right now, an unproven concept as far as pilot goes, but uh, they are calling this the Iro Utsushi. Iro Utsushi, Utsushi. So they're available now if you wanted to experiment with them. If you wanted to experiment with something else, you'll have an opportunity later because we're going to talk about um, actually, you'll have an opportunity right now to learn about them. Sailor, right alongside Pilot, is throwing their hat into the dip pen arena. And whereas that Pilot is very straightforward, the Hokoro, Hokoro dip nib situation is very different. Not simple at all. So let me move some of this out of the way. We'll talk about all this later. All right, Esterbrook, chill. We'll get to you in a minute. The Hokoro dip nib. It comes like this, it comes like this, it comes like this, it comes in these, and then you have this. This is one of the main things I wanted to talk about today because it's not straightforward, but we're gonna make it straightforward. You and I together, it's not gonna be complicated once we're done. All right, so first things first, let's take a look at the pen itself. So this is the more or less standard. No, this is the gift set, get out of here. This is the more or less standard option. It comes with a nib holder and a nib. So um, one thing that is a little bit different that you'll see here versus right here, and this is one of the things you wanna keep an eye out for. If you look at these two nibs, this nib, you can see the breather hole is black. This one, it's clear. That's because the um, larger Fude nib, which is what you see here, comes with a reservoir attached to it, which is in effect a feed when you're talking about a fountain pen. 
But these are dip pens, so it's not called a feed, it's called a reservoir. So we're going to open up this. Here's your pen. As you can see, there's no nib on it. Oh wait, yes there is. You pop that off, put it in here, and you're good to go. Again, this is a Fude nib, so it's upturned, so that when you're writing, it gives a big broad stroke there. And then um, it has the reservoir installed. It looks like a feed, acts like a feed, but since it's not really feeding ink from any sort of reservoir in the back, I guess it's not really a feed. But either way, it does hold more ink than its counterpart without one of these. And we'll take a look at that as well. We see a similar option here. We've got uh, gray and white available in these pens. The same nibs are going to be available though. You can get these nibs in a fine, a medium, a 1.0, a 2.0, or a Fude. So this one right here is a Fude, and this one is a 1.0. The 1.0 does not have the reservoir, and the Fude does. Both operationally function the same. If you go with the one without the nib, it's going to be easier to clean, uh, but it's not going to write as long with each dip, whereas the one with the reservoir will certainly do that, but uh, because there are more nooks and crannies involved, you will need to clean it a little bit more thoroughly. If you did want to go with one of these and then later install the reservoir, they sell them separately. And they also sell separately just the barrel, which is, uh, I think, eight bucks. And then if you wanted to buy the reservoir right here, this one is four dollars. So you can get that and then uh, each of the pens that have a nib already installed on them are $16. Now, if you wanted, you could also go with one of these, which is a set, either in white or gray. Uh, these are being sold for $25, and they will come with a fine nib and a 1.0 uh, stub nib. So that is also available. And the uh, colors of the housing here denote nib size. So this right here is a fine, and this is a 1.0 stub, this kind of tealy color. Like I mentioned, you can also get the nibs uh, separately. Now these, sorry, I did not mention the price of the nibs. These individual nibs are going to be uh, $10 a piece. So you'll see that again, no Reservoir, 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 no reservoir, no reservoir. Very easy to see because they photographed them appropriately and the ones that you can see kind of light through the breather hole are the ones without. So they are the same price. You don't end up paying more for the ones with the reservoir even though they sell the reservoir for extra. You're just getting a free reservoir, I guess. Presumably because those larger nibs, the Fude and the 2.0, um, have uh, higher ink capacity needs perhaps, but it's obvious which ones come with it at, at the very least. So hopefully you're not confused. It took me a little bit to wrap my brains around all of this fun, magical stuff, but hopefully you got there quicker than I did. All right, what's next, everybody? We're gonna talk about a rickshaw product, and that is this guy. This pen might very well look familiar to you. It is very clearly inspired by the Visconti Homo sapiens. Um, while not identical to it, you do have Mount Etna in the background, which is an active volcano and the source of Visconti's lava for their volcanic resin pens, such as the, two, the I'm sorry, 2000, golly, such as the Homo sapien here. And it holds six pens in these slots, each individually stitched, so no pen is touching each other. Close that flap, you roll it down, and then you loop this around, have this go around this little tab, and then you can pull it tight, and you've got a nice, sturdy pen sleeve option that keeps everything very, very safe and very portable as well. This was done by the same artist that did the Mount Fuji rickshaw pen roll that features a pen inspired by the Platinum 3776. So you've got a little bit of Japan in that one, you've got a lot of Italy in this one. So if you wanted to, uh, if you already own that one and you wanted a pairing to it, uh, here we go. This is available and this is an exclusive to the Goulet Pen Company. So 
we're excited about that. Let's move on to, I think, a pen now. Yes, we're going to talk about a Monteverde. This is another exclusive that we're pretty excited about. It is a Formula M. And the Formula M Montever Monteverde, Monteverde <laughs> has metal braiding around the side here. Um, this is a color that's hard to capture. On my phone here, it looks a little gray. In reality, it is a dusty purple, so we're going to ignore the phone here, and I'll show you some good images taken by professional photographers. It's a beautiful pen, and it, more importantly, is a color that I just haven't seen yet on a pen. For me, it gets exciting because Robert Auster, um, the ink brand, makes a lot of really great dusty purples that would be a good pairing for this pen. But I just get excited whenever I see a color pen that is unique and new because it's not every day that that happens. So you've got a Yovo steel nib installed on this. You will be using a standard international cartridge or converter with this pen, both of which it comes with. So it's a fun pen and it's affordable at $68. We're going to move on. Um, honestly, my mic is blinking, so I'm gonna try to finish this without my mic dying. We'll see if we can do that. Next up is a Shone Design Pocket 6. We've had a few Pocket 6s in the past, but they have all been exclusives or timed exclusives. This is going to be an ongoing option for anybody who wants to pick up a Shone Design Pocket 6, which is uh, Ian Shone's most popular model by far. You can get the black one here and uh, presumably in perpetuity. But here it is. It is a stunning, absolutely beautiful, pristine satin black. I absolutely love this pen. It's very light. It is the smallest pen that we currently have available in our store. Um, maybe not in uh, you know uh, width, but certainly in length when it is closed. But when it is posted like this, it is a absolute full-length pen, also featuring a Yovo steel nib. It is a cartridge-only pen. Um, Again, it comes with that as well. And it is available for $135, which is more affordable than the um, more extravagant uh, limited editions we've had in the past. But everybody loves a nice matte black. And it does have a little pop of shine there on the threads, which I think adds a nice little element to it. But it's a very fun pen. It is a gorgeous satin black, and it goes with just about anything. And again, it's great for um, its versatility really helps it match to any sort of color you'd like to have. And available now, available ongoing. Ian Schoen, Schoen Design, Pocket 6. They're fantastic. Ian's fantastic. He has a tremendously high quality standard for himself and all of the pens that come out of his shop in Philadelphia. Estherbrook is bringing us something special for the holiday season in the form of a gift set. Not merely some things that you can order and they just arrive together, but no, an actual box packed very attractively with a bunch of stuff. So this is pretty exciting. And if you wanted to gift somebody, you know, a nice, nice pen with a bunch of stuff that uh, gets them covered as far as accessories go, this is a great option. So you will see, you know, obviously the front and center piece is the SD. This one is in Nouveau Blue, but we're also carrying packages in the um, uh, Botanical Gardens and the, uh, what's the other one? The uh, greenish one. Sea Glass is the other one. So it's got a little fun Estherbrookie piece of paper here. But you've got your SD. You've got a single canvas pen sleeve here. Uh, they're all going to be blue. This doesn't change. None of the, nothing, nothing else changes. Only the pen changes, you know, set to set. You're going to have a three-pack, I believe. Yes, three-pack of notebooks and then a pack of ink cartridges as well. So all you need to get started, your ink, your notebook, your pen, your pen sleeve, and a beautiful, beautiful pen made by Estherbrook with a lovely steel nib and some very, very sharp materials. Personally, the Nouveau Blue is what I think uh, is an exceptional color and my favorite to come out of Estherbrook thus far. However, I'm not gonna say forever because they keep surprising me. Ooh, Platinum, good. I'm excited about this one for two reasons. A, it's pretty. B, I haven't actually held it in my hands yet. So selfishly, I'm pretty jazzed. But I know it looks good. And oh my goodness, oh my goodness, y'all, oh man, 
That is really nice. So it is a blue. Um, I'm sorry, God. This is a Platinum 3776 Sands of Komodo, and it is a stunning addition to the 3776 line. It is $304, and you'll see very clearly that it is a blue pen with rose gold accents, and I think that that is just a wonderful combination. I don't know how long this one's going to be around, but it is a special edition, so I would be willing to bet not super long. You'll see based on this little spring here, that this features their slip and seal cap design, which allegedly allows you to keep this thing inked up for a year or more, and it'll still write. And it comes with a converter. You can see that in there, platinum converter. You'll also get some cartridges in the box and platinum's beautiful gold nib, 14 karat rose gold there. And it's just lovely. This shade of blue with rose gold is a new combination for me, but one that works really, really well. So glad I finally got to see that. And now I want one, so great. All right, we're gonna move on to another pen and it's going to be a sailor. This sailor says Soul of Chess on it because it is a sequel in a way friend, a family member, to the Knight to E4 pen that they came out with last year, which had a knight on the finial, that's chess piece, the knight. So this is another chess piece, this one, a pawn. The pawn is known as the soul of chess, which I did not know, that's new information to me, and there it is. The underrated soul of chess there. And it's a lovely white pen with a clear barrel. The Knight to E4 and the Soul of Chess here have metal grip sections, which is not common for a Sailor pen. This is a Pro Gear, and it is $460. So the larger of the uh, you know Pro Gear versus Pro Gear Slim, but still smaller than the Sailor King of Pens Pro Gear. Plenty large, and because of the metal grip section, I would say more balanced than your average Pro Gear, definitely more heavy, definitely more front weighted, but if posted, I think it is a really, really nice balance. And I think that the clear and white really work well together, especially with that metal grip section. The whole thing is just really cohesive. So if you got the Knight to E4 and you want a friend, or if you're a chess fan, but you just did not jive with that Knight, the soul of chess may be calling your name. These are limited to 500 pens. Okay, we're going to speak about and look at some Tachiya pens now. And these are both Urushi pens. And they are quite lovely. I will show you a bit of the presentation here. You've got a wooden box. These are both um, pens in their Earth series. So you've got a lovely box with beautiful green uh, kind of velvety fabric and a converter. Comes with a Sailor converter. Um, it will also take Sailor cartridges as well. And a kimono sleeve with the Tachiya logo right there. So inside the sleeve here, we have the Dusk Light Tachiya Miyabi Earth. So um, Dusk Light here and its partner, which is the Bokashi Lava will come similarly packaged, and it looks similar, but uh, I believe it's black where this one is blue. Yeah, so um, di different. So you do have black and blue happening. The um, Bokashi Lava is predominantly red with a hint of black there toward the end, and then the Dusk Light, you'll see, has both blue at the top and the bottom with uh, the blue kit, the blue clip kind of connecting everything. Both of them will have the same nib, made in Japan. It's an 18 karat gold Tachiya nib, this one in medium fine. Um, these will also, uh, yeah, like I said, these will take Sailor converters and Sailor cartridges. And they're both made of ebonite and lacquer, Urushi lacquer um, that takes many months to set and a very skilled hand to apply. Um, as you can see here, this is number 15 out of 50. Both of these 
are um, limited editions. The Bokashi Lava is out of 100. And these are both made in Wajima, Japan. And Wajima is a region known for their traditional Urushi uh, artisans. And uh, generally it's understood that any Urushi piece coming out of Wajima has a bit more of a historical connection to the work and to its multi-generational you know, connection uh, to, you know, it's a big deal. <laughs> Wajima is Urushi Central. And these pens also have a cushion cap, so you can see that happening. I'll show you here close up. There's a spring-loaded inner cap, similar to what we see in Platinum and Visconti, that keeps everything nice and tight. Look how beautiful that Urushi is. You can tell when a pen is lacquered because of how it kind of curves around these edges. You don't see sharp edges where the cap meets the barrel. You see that? It has a softness to it that you get when you have these many, many layers of Urushi lacquer. And it just, it feels different too. It's still cool, but uh, it's hard to explain. When you, when you get a heavily lacquered pen like this, it definitely feels different in the hand and it feels very special. And you do kind of feel that connection to the art of Urushi and lacquer from Japan. Uh, these are available in extra fine, medium fine, medium and broad. That's a medium fine. And they are $950 each. To get one of these pens in this size, with all of this Urushi for under $1,000 is pretty awesome, being honest. I know that is extremely expensive. I've actually never bought a pen that expensive before, but knowing what I know about Urushi pens, that is, that's a deal. It really is, you know, all things considered. All right, finally, we're moving to Visconti. This is a big pen. This is a big deal pen. And let's see, you can see it for the first time with me. There it is looking east. So this is a pen. It doesn't uh, have a particular model associated with it. It's not a Homo sapiens or a Divina or an Opera, but um, wow, that is, that is a heavy, heavy lid. And that's, I think, I think that's real glass in there. Either way, the pen is why we're here. Also a heavy pen. My goodness. Oh, hold on. What's under here? <gasps> We've got a card with the, uh, you know, oh, it's out of 188, double reservoir filling system. It is made of uh, silver. So it is Vermeil, which is uh, rose gold on top of silver. So that's what this is. It is a uh, silver tube that is, uh, you know, hollowed out in, the, in these intricate shapes that are inspired by Eastern architecture. So you've got very meticulously carved gold here with um, acrylic underneath. You've got the Visconti V up at the top and in the center, and then you've got your numbers there. This is also going to be your piston knob or your vacuum knob. You've got an ink window there, and that's the Visconti nib. You'll see is 18 karat in fine made by Visconti. And here is the vacuum rod. So you would press that into your ink, compress the rod, and it would fill. Very heavy duty knob here. Definitely has a lot of weight to it. The pen itself has a lot of weight to it. It is definitely prestigious feeling. It feels like you're writing with a piece of art. And uh, I mean, it is, right? This is, this is next level. I mean, look at that. That's just, there's nothing to say about that. That's, that's incredible. It's also an expensive pen. It is $2,000, uh, $2,076 exactly. But I wanted to at least share it with you guys. It's uh, not something that I'm going to be able to own, uh, but it's certainly pretty to look at. So if I get to look at something like this, I want you to be able to check it out as well. And that's it. I know that that was quite a bit and uh, I'm sorry if I rushed anything, but I wanted to get to everything because uh, it had been a little bit before uh, since we had done this. So, 
thank you for spending some time with me. I really do appreciate it. I know that you've got other things to do, but uh, I appreciate doing this and I appreciate you. So whether or not you decide to buy any of this, I still thank you for giving me some of your time. Have fun, right on.